Good evening and salutations, my Jake fans. <laughs> That's what happens when you do like four different reviews. Um, going into this episode, there were things that worked. And then there were other things that was just like, didn't really work, didn't really have that much of an impact. It was kind of there just to be there. Um, which never really worked for me personally, but whatever. Um, I'm going to be jumping back and forth. So I know it's going to get a little kind of confusing, but just kind of follow me for a minute. There's one point where Jordan runs into Portia because, you know, Jordan was sitting there talking to Curtis about the reporters and everything like that. And she wants to see what she can do to help. So she talks to Portia, and Portia goes off on her. And I'm going to be honest. He, listen, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know how I feel about Portia. With that being said, she was completely out of line. She got upset with her because she was like, oh, well, you arrested my daughter, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, so we are, you do realize that a lot of the evidence is pointing towards your daughter. And what did you want her to do? Sit there and say no? Because... If she would have, the next person would have came in, would have arrested her. And then Jordan probably would have lost her job. And, and so it reminds me of days a little bit. But my point is, it was like she was just out of pocket for that. Like she got angry and nasty with her for no reason. And it was like, it wasn't like Jordan was sitting there coming, you know, at Trina at a certain way. That You know, the way that she was sitting there treating her when she was in the police station. Everything that she was sitting there doing. The fact that Portia came at her sideways was just like, I get it, you know, you're a mother and that's, that's your daughter and everything like that. But she was so angry at her that she never bothered to sit there and take the time to appreciate um, the way Jordan was sitting there handling this whole case. And she was, there was one point she was like, oh, well, now you're making it personal, whatever. Um, I guess they're going to sit there and bring in Curtis talking about, oh, you're only coming after me because, you know, I'm with Curtis now. And I'm like, all right, cool. So you, you, this, this is today, this is the day that you're going to sit there and show your ass. Um, on top of that, you see, um, Curtis coming right up in there, just having that look. Now, let's get into Curtis for a minute. Um, first Curtis walk, you know, um, talks to Portia. Yeah, so first, Curtis, um, comes, you know, walks in and, um, talks to Jordan. Because they're at the docks or whatever, and, you know, Curtis is just kind of waiting there to meet, um, Selena. Comes into Jordan, and they're talking a little bit about Trina and the reporters and everything like that. And they talk about Spencer and, and Esme and everything like that. But my whole thing is that not at what point did Curtis apologize for him acting like a jackass to Jordan when he wanted those files. At one point, did he not actually apologize? The only thing that they said was, oh, we, we good about that? Like, they just kind of just brushed it off. Like, even Jordan was like, so we okay about that? We good? Like, no, we ain't good. That dude should be sitting there apologizing to you for him trying to compromise your position and compromise your job and getting you fired pretty much for him asking her to do something that was against the law and everything else. But instead, they just kind of were just like, so we good about that whole thing? Yeah, like it's just water on our bridge. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm not going to lie. That that irritated me. Um, now afterwards, after she left, Selena came out like the bushes or whatever and you know, she wanted to make sure that they were still good on their deal. And Curtis was like, all right, well, did you find anything? Long story short, Selena was like, Marshall was not in witness protection. Now, at this point, I feel like Curtis is pushing his luck. He is trying his patience with Selena. And uh, I, I feel like that's just the wrong person to sit there and, and try your patience with him. Um, cause you know, Selena's like, yo, listen, you got, you, you got the club ready for my game, right? Like, he's like, whoa, 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 not so fast. Did you get anything? And this, that, and the third, I'm like, here's the thing. Curtis, you made a deal with the devil. Okay. And at this point, 
it's probably best to sit there and honor it. Um, it's, it's, it'd just be in your best interest to sit there and honor it. And I feel like he's been, I feel like he's been testing her patience since he actually decided to make this deal with her. Um, like, bro, <laughs> she is, she is not the one. Now, Britt has been, well, <laughs> when it came to, when it comes to this whole matchmaking thing, she's been literally just trying to make a bunch of excuses to not date any one of these men. Because let's be honest, they're not going to hold up to Jason. And that's what it really comes down to. None of these men are not going to hold up to Jason. So this whole time, you know, they're talking about this person, they're talking about that person. And even Brad is like, you know, they're not. They're not Jason. They're not going to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're looking for danger and stuff like that, you know, you talk about skydiving. Well, that's nothing. Com well, maybe it is. But, like, compared to running from assassins and the law and everything like that, you're not going to get that same adrenaline rush. So, why are you just sitting there wasting your time with these people? Um, now, Brad does bring up the fact, like, yo, listen, what's, what's going on with the job? Like, did you talk to Terry? This, that, and third. Mind you, Brit is not there thinking about the warning that um, Selena gave her as far as steering Brad in the right direction. Um, and, and long, you know, long story short, Brit is like, listen, hold up for something better than being an orderly. Because um, that was pretty much the only job that... That was pretty much the only job that Terry was like, yeah, that's the only job I'm going to allow you to be. And, you know, tells him to set his sights with something higher. Brad, a couple of times, get kind of suspicious. Like, you know, do you not really want me working here? This, that, and the third. And also about the line that Britt said as far as, you know, I'm not going to really have a future with them anyway. Now she's all like, oh, I'm working. I work weekends. And I work days. And I'm like, I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I feel like at this point, the only thing that they can possibly do is put Britt with Dante after Sam royally screwed up her relationship less than, I don't know, two days ago of her Smith is saying, Carly, I'm not going to sit there and do that. I'm not going to ruin my relationship. And then proceeds to ruin her relationship. Um, I I'm still not over that. <laughs> point being said, I feel like at this point, I mean, it's not like they're going to sit there and get another person to, you know, have Brit date. And to be honest, I feel like they already have too many people as this. So, yeah, I feel like Dante is kind of the best choice. Maybe, maybe Drew. I feel like it's going to be Dante. I feel like it's going to be Dante. Um, Alexis talks to... Well, Alexis talks to Finn at first about Harmony and just pretty much the fact that she doesn't really know her. Like, yeah, she knew her in Spring Ridge or whatever. They were good friends. But after having her in the house and, you know, her knowing the house inside and out because of, quote unquote, her trying to recruit um, Christina for Donna Day, she's like, I really don't know her. And yet you invited this woman that you don't know to stay at your place. Yeah. So, so when Finn was like, do you want me to get advice or do you want me to sit there and listen? And, you know, Lex is like, just listen, because she already knew what Finn was going to sit there and say. I mean, hell, she already heard it from Sam and, well, not so much as Christina, but passive aggressively, passive aggressive Molly, as, as far as her concerns towards um, Harmony. Anyway, she has a talk with Valentine, and it's mostly about the fact that Victor wants to use um, the newspaper. And Alexis is like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So they don't really talk about much outside of that. It's just more of a pitch, which um, clearly Alexis is not going for. So, yeah. Let's talk about Harmony real quick. So Harmony... Um, goes into um, Brendan's room and finds the files. All the files that was on her, which is, I'm going to be honest, I mean, 
Brit is at the time Brit was not there trying to do this whole. I mean Brendan, Brendan was not there trying to do this whole blackmailing thing, right? With you know Harmony as far as getting money and a payout and this time third. And he never thought to I don't know hide your evidence that you have towards Harmony somewhere safe, anywhere safe other than just. I mean, I felt like she just found it like on a table or a bed or something like that. Like, it was just all there. Um, so anyway, she finds all the files. And, you know, now at this point, she decides to go get a drink. With all this information that's on her. You have all this information that's on you. And it, it can fall out and fall into the floor at any point in time. But she's like, no, I'm just going to sit there and get a drink. Oh, um... For anyone who's like, um, okay, let's put it this way. I'm not a huge drinker. So, what does it mean? And that sounds stupid, but what does it mean when people ask for like a double whiskey or, you know, make it a double? I never really understood that. I, I still don't. Um, so, if anyone knows what that means when they sit there and say, oh, I have whiskey, oh, you know what, make it a double, it's like, what does that mean? Does it mean just like pour more whiskey in it? Like what? What does that mean? I'm assuming that's what it means. Um. Anyway, she runs into Harmony, and <sighs> Harmony for somebody who is in a cult and have to sit there and really be good at lying and you know not really breaking. I want to say character, but just like somebody who's lying, who's been more or less a professional liar for most of the part of their lives, she is so cryptic and just very open and like even every time that Harmony starts, I mean every time that Willow starts asking questions like are you okay, are you good, like there's one point you see Harmony seem like she's about to start crying and she's all like oh well I want to be with you as long as I can be here and it's like what does that mean? What does that mean? You're, you're scaring me. You're scaring me. What does that mean? And of course, she talks about Brendan. Um, you know, because she brings up Brendan, or somehow Brendan gets brought. Oh, that's what it is. Willow's like, does it have anything to do with that guy that you saw yesterday? Like, it looked like it was some kind of off between you two. And then she's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, that stranger that I don't know. Oh, yeah, I know them because, you know, Alexis. And it's like. What are you doing? Maybe you should actually start drinking before you actually broke into that office because your lies are just starting to make zero sense <laughs> whatsoever. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where it's like she's trying to lie to Willow to, you know, keep her calm and not keep her from being suspicious. But the more you're talking, the more you're making her suspicious. So you're doing the opposite of a good job at whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, later on, Alexis, I guess, is going to, um, maybe she's going to go to Spoon Island or whatever, but she's at the docks. And of course, she comes across um, Brendan's body that's floating, <laughs> that's floating in the, um, in the water. I I'm also laughing about the fact that at the time, I'm you know they did the flashback scene where Harmony was talking to um, Brendan, and during a really bad green screen, like it was so bad that every time they start moving her head, you saw like the white in between. <laughs> it's just like I get it; it's a soap opera, whatever. But like y'all couldn't found like any other way for her to accidentally kill. <clears throat> Kill Brendan, which by the way, she looked like she was about to fall off the cliff with him, um, which would have been kind of hilarious. But we, you know, we obviously still need her to continue this story, but it would have been so hilarious that she would have fell along with him because she looked like she was about to lose her balance at one point. I'm like, I'm going to be honest, these whole little powwow meetings between Felicia and Anna and Laura and Robert and I feel like I'm missing someone, but I think I'm fine. They generally go nowhere. Um, you know, they talk about the cable bridge. They talk about Jennifer Smith being the most likely suspect, according to the 
you know, WSB. But Laura's like, you know, that's not really her style to sit there and kill a whole... First of all, to kill Luke is one thing, but then to sit there and kill a whole bunch of other people just to get to Luke is like, no. Um, you know, she still thinks it's um, Victor, but they don't have any proof. On top of that, you know, Victor is in with the WSB, so not like, you know, he doesn't have any connections to move um, the investigation in a certain way. There's one point where Robert does talk about Valentine and talk about um, Anna, you know, playing Valentine to get more information on Victor. But, you know, Anna's like, I'm not, like, no, what, are you, what the hell are you talking about? Long story short, it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, Robert acts like a dick when he sees um, Valentine, and then Valentine says something. You know, he smiles. He says something to Anna, and she smiles. Anna has a has a listen. Anna is a very complicated character, and she, it, they, despite her whole messy way of dealing with Peter. I do like her accent, and she does have a pretty smile. Um, and, and that's pretty much all I'm going to sit down and say about that. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I'm going to sit down and say about that. But, I mean, regardless, you know, just in general, like, whenever they start having these meetings, even when, like, Sam is involved and Dante is involved, and they're talking about theories and stuff like that, it's like, all right, that's cool, but, like, is it really going anywhere? Like, <sighs> um. Um, so getting back to Britt and Brad, at some point, Selena walks in there and Selena's like, hey, listen, by the way, I got a new job for you. And it starts like five minutes ago. So you, you need to get your ass up and, and start walking with me. And of course, you know, she has that deadly stare, that deadly stare at Britt. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, here's the thing. It does suck for Brit, as far as having Selena, you know, blackmail her, you know, with her relationship towards Brad, and you know, I stress this enough, I don't like Brad, but, you know, for better or worse, or mostly for worse, that is Brit's friend, pretty much one of her only close friends, so it does kind of suck to sit there and see, you know, Selena kind of blackmail her that way, but at this point, you know, I feel like by the the more that these episodes are going on and more Selena is in the show, like she already has her hooks in so many people. Curtis, Deception, Brit, Brad. I'm just like Who's gonna be next? Hmm. I feel like that's about it. Yeah, I feel like for the most part, that's really about it. Um, funny, I was not there thinking about. I was thinking about GH, and I was not there thinking about BNB because I've been having some issues with BNB as far as seeing the same characters in the same hospital setting for about two weeks, and <laughs> this is one of those times where, at least with GH. When they had just have, I always feel like they have too many characters. I still do. With that being said, it is nice to sit there and see different characters. Um, it's already like I'm, I'm seeing the pre, you know, I sort of previews or a little bit of um B and B when I was getting breakfast at like one thirty in the afternoon. Um, and already I was looking, I was like, oh, damn, hospital settings again. So I was actually really looking forward to GH because I was like, listen, I know I complained about it being an overbloated cast. Oh, and I knew I did forget something. I did. So Fen, Fen is not there talking to Liz. And one of the things that Ben said to Liz was as far as seeing Kevin because Liz is like, you know, I wish I didn't take those pills. Otherwise, I would have been able to remember who that person was that was on, you know, that, that is sneaking to my house. Now, Finn was like, you know, why don't you talk to Kevin as far as trying to do hypnosis, you know, something that can sit there and help you remember. And Liz is like, ah, oh, well, I don't really know. And I'm like, 
Liz, this is the reason why it's been pissing me off about Liz's storyline a little bit, is that, like, cameras seem too invasive. Um, hypnosis seems, ah, oh, I don't really know. I'm like, what is your plan, Liz? What is your plan? Your plan is to stay at home by yourself and, what, catch the, catch the, um, the stalker in the app? What, what, what's your plan? What, you know martial arts? You got a gun? Like, what is your plan moving forward once you find who it is? And how do you plan on stopping this person? I, I, I just, the fact that she was like, I don't know about the whole Kevin thing. I'm like, Liz, you're trying my damn patience. Now, and I, I did mention it, and I don't know if I mentioned this before. So Liz got into a spat with Portia because of some patient and files that wasn't filed correctly. And, you know, Portia was like, more or less, get off my back. And Liz was like, no, this is my job to sit there and do your job. They both apologized to each other and they kind of realized that they were going through a hell of a lot of stress between Trina and the stalker. Now, towards the end of the episode, um, Liz answered the call. And at first, the call was like, the caller said, don't forget me in this very villainous, monstrous kind of way. And Liz was like, what? What's going on? But then... You know, it turns out that it was a patient's like, hey, don't forgive me. You know, I need some extra pose or whatever or something. And it made me sit there and think of two things. One, this is what everyone else was sitting there saying, that this is in Liz's head. Okay, the fact of the matter was, at first, Liz just heard, don't forget me. And then it turned to, don't forget me, Um, you know, my pillows are the, like, um, the patient was asking for something. And the voice did change, which makes me sit there and think, like everyone else, that it's in her head. It's in her. It's in her head. Or two. Two. Maybe somebody you know, like rigged the phones, where it's like at first this person was sitting there talking, and then I might have heard like a click or something like that. I don't remember. And it was the patient. So either somebody really called GH to scare her. And then when she answered again, it was the patient. Or maybe that person was in her room. I don't know. The, po the point is, is either A, is in her head. Or B, now this person is there stalking her again at her job and is just being more brazen about it. Either way, it's getting worse. So when Liz do things like, oh, I don't know about working with Kevin. Or, oh, I don't know about you staying here. Or, I don't know about the cameras. It's like, Liz, what is your plan? What was what was your plan? What's what's your great idea, Liz? Because I, I'm not hearing anything so far, and it's it's to be honest, it's kind of pissing me off. Um, yeah, I'm glad I actually did yammer for a little bit because it I would have been kind of I would have been disappointed in myself if I forgot about talking about that part. Um, now with that being said, I'm gonna go. I think that's a little bit. With that being said, I'm gonna go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.